If the opinion polls are to be believed, Penny Wong is the most popular politician in Australia. But there's one beloved Labor figure she doesn't count among her fans. That's former Prime Minister Paul Keating. Here he is at the National Press Club last year. Running around the Pacific Islands with a lay around your neck handing out money, which is what Penny does, is not foreign policy. It's a consular task, fundamentally. Foreign policy is what you do with the great powers, what you do with China, what you do with the United States. Wong hasn't taken Keating's criticism laying down. In her own press club address, delivered about a month after Keating's, Wong said this. But I think on Mr Keating, what I would say is this. I think in tone and substance, he diminished both his legacy and the subject matter. That's what this all comes down to. Keating himself said good foreign policy lies in what you do with China and the US. And that's the fine line Wong is walking. On one side, there's the need to be firm on China's totalitarian tendencies, its escalating aggression in the Pacific, and alleged human rights abuses perpetrated against Australian citizens and ethnic minorities like Uyghurs. On the other side is the need for Wong to repair and cultivate the relationship with Australia's biggest trading partner. It's all expected to come to a head this week when Penny Wong meets with her Chinese counterpart, Wong Yi, in Canberra. It's believed that the visit will coincide, among other things, with the end of crippling tariffs on Australian wine that have seen almost 3 billion bottles stockpiled in Australia since the end of 2020. The Chinese Ministry of Commerce has released an interim draft determination proposing they be removed. The draft determination is not final and subject to change, but is proposing cutting the tariffs by up to 200%. It's a big moment for Australian diplomacy. The key thing that both the Australian government and the Chinese government want to happen after this meeting is they want the Chinese Premier, Premier Li, to come to Australia. Will Glasgow is the Australian's North Asia correspondent. So this meeting in mid-March is all about clearing problems and dealing with them quietly behind closed doors before that trip and then also creating positive news, the Chinese say positive energy, before that meeting to be the backdrop to that meeting. So the Chinese just last week signalled those huge tariffs are going to go. And so that's a big win for the Albanese government, but that's part of that effort to create goodwill, both for this trip by Wang Yi, but more to make the space, the positive space, for the Chinese Premier to come to Australia after what has been a spectacularly bad more than half decade in this bilateral relationship. Wang Yi's predecessor, Jin Gang, is missing. He'd only been in the job six months when he was stripped of the title and placed in detention. He hasn't been seen or heard from since. You're exactly right. Wang Yi is a survivor. And I mean, frankly, he's thrived in this political system. I mean, he did very well in the pre-Xi Jinping era. I mean, to get to the position that he was Xi Jinping's first foreign minister, he's been in that role almost, well, for more than a decade with a very small less than half year where he wasn't the foreign minister. He was replaced and his replacement went missing. (laughs) He didn't have the talent uh, of longevity that Wang Yi had. And there's all sorts of gossip and speculation about a poisonous relationship between those two and whether or not Wang Yi was involved in the manoeuvres that took place to get rid of him. Who knows? It's never been confirmed. It's frankly only been half confirmed that that guy's still alive, right? We know hardly more than that. Wang Yi, on the other hand, I mean, he's been promoted throughout the Xi era. So not only is he the foreign minister, he has a more senior position now within the Chinese political system. I mean, ultimately, Xi Jinping sits on top of it all and he makes the big international foreign policy decisions, but he does it with Wang Yi's advice. And Wang Yi is in a very small group of people who get face-to-face time with Xi Jinping, who speak directly to Xi Jinping. So, again, this meeting for Penny Wong and for Australia is a very rare occasion to actually have the attention of someone who can talk to Xi Jinping. And ultimately, when you're trying to move settings on foreign policy with China or have a message conveyed back to China, anything of significance, 
that you want change on, it's going to need Xi Jinping's green light. And Wang Yi is one of those very few people that you can speak to and know that's going to happen. Wang isn't the Labour figure Wang Yi wants to meet with the most. It's not the current PM either. That honour is reserved for none other than Paul Keating. The former PM has been invited to an audience with Wang Yi on Thursday. And it could spell danger for the AUKUS pact. That's because Keating is one of the pact's most vocal critics, and his endorsement could be extremely powerful for the Communist Party, who want it gone. For the most part, the talk has been about positive energy and positive signals. I mean, a proposed meeting at this stage. The day after, Wang Yi visits and meets Penny Wong and Anthony Albanese. I mean, in the Australian context, it's just explosive. I mean, it's an extraordinary thing that a visiting Chinese leader would get so involved in really pointy, high stakes, raw, personal power politics in Australia. Paul Keating is the most trenchant, sharpest, I'd say probably the most effective in terms of his influence, critic of Australian foreign policy. I mean, I've spoken to senior diplomats in other neighbouring countries, and they can't believe it. I mean, he's in a very rare club of former country leaders who talk that way about their own country, let alone former country leaders who talk that way about their own country's government that's run by their party that they're in. And, I mean, you couldn't give a clearer tick of approval from Beijing for Paul Keating's comments than seeking him out for this meeting. Um, It's absolutely extraordinary. At this stage, it's not even clear if he's going to meet with the opposition. I, I just can't think of a situation where we've had this before in Australia and that it's taking place again, on a trip that's got this banner phrase that it's, you know, about positive signals and creating positive momentum. The whole thing just couldn't be more ironic or or more contradictory to those stated aims. And says a lot about the ongoing profound gap of trust in this relationship. That the Chinese government's made this play reveals a lot about how they do statecraft in this current era and some of the risks they're prepared to take. Uh, You know, I think when the Chinese officials say they want positive signals to come out of the Penny Wong, Wang Yi meeting and the meeting with Prime Minister Albanese, I mean, I think that's true. That's what they want in the short term, right? But clearly they have ambition to change the nature of the Australian-China relationship and try to influence how Australia sets its foreign policy, its China policy, its policy within the region. And that outreach to Keating looks like a government that's trying to shape that in a much bigger way, has much more ambition and certainly hasn't given up on the idea that it could see a future Australian government unwind the AUKUS security technology partnership to rather than thicken the US alliance, weaken it. You know, they still think that's quite possible. Even if it's not accepted, the invitation speaks volume about foreign policy divisions within Labor, especially where China is concerned. I think where Keating or the division is most striking is between former senior figures. Keating is the apex of that, but Bob Carr, former foreign minister, long longest New South Wales premier, is another really notable one. But this older guard of Australian Labor leaders and senior politicians are speaking very prominently and trying to influence the Labor membership. And so that's something that the Federal Labor Party's got to manage. It's a very difficult thing for them because Paul Keating is a Labor legend and it's very uncomfortable for members of the Federal Labor Party, many who worship this guy, but it's very difficult for them to then explain to the membership That's their view. But on China, they completely disagree with Keating. So he creates a lot of tension there. But some are very sensitive to these because of the membership in their seats, very sensitive to this this cut through that Keating really has had amongst certain parts of the Labor membership on China, on AUKUS, on Australia's relationship with America. Coming up, why the nation's top cop is leaving the tough conversations to Penny Wong. And just a friendly reminder that our subscribers can access this kind of journalism and expert analysis anytime. Check us out at theaustralian.com.au. We'll be back after the break. (music) 
While Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi bounces between meetings in Canberra and Sydney, one of Australia's most senior police officials will be wheeling and dealing in China. The Australian's chief political correspondent, Jeff Chambers, is exclusively revealing today that Australian Federal Police Commissioner Rhys Kershaw will re-sign three key security agreements with Chinese officials in Beijing. The deals with China's Ministry of Public Security are designed to tackle transactional and drug-related crime. The aim is to beef up crime fighting in the Pacific so the cops can take down drug cartels operating in the region. Kershaw's visit represents the highest level police delegation to China in a long time, but there's one subject that's unlikely to come up in his meetings with Chinese security officials. That's the plight of Australian academic Dr. Yang Hung Jun who's been held in detention on questionable espionage charges since early 2019. Now, after a closed trial and countless delays, a Beijing court has handed down a harsh verdict, which includes the smallest reprieve. In Beijing, Australian citizen Dr Yang Jun has received a suspended death sentence. We understand that this can be committed to a life sentence following two years. It's been left to Penny Wong to raise it in her meeting with Wang Yi on Wednesday. The Australian government was surprised by that decision, just how harsh it was. Australia opposes, formally opposes the death penalty. So to have an Australian citizen sentenced to death, albeit a suspended one by a foreign government, it's a really searing decision for the Australian government. They're very unhappy about it. They're very limited in what they can do. So the foreign minister will make it very clear Australia would like a positive environment for the Chinese foreign minister, the Chinese premier to have when he comes to visit. Well, it's not helpful to a positive atmosphere to have an Australian with a death sentence in a Beijing prison. So they will really impress that this matters to people in Australia. Australia is very limited in what it can do, but it can just keep impressing that point. And, you know, Penny Wong will want to do that at a very senior level again. Will Glasgow is The Australian's North Asia correspondent. You can read that story as well as all the nation's best news, sport and politics right now at theaustralian.com.au.